In 2011, the Green Bay Packers won their first Super Bowl title since 1997, starting the decade off with a bang. But since then, Wisconsin sports has seen nothing but heartache and disappointment. Many Wisconsin sports fans would disagree with me wholeheartedly, saying, what about all those division championships, Big Ten championships, NCAA tournament appearances, FBS bowl game victories? No, those are all great, and I'm not taking away any accomplishments by any of our Wisconsin teams. Don't get me wrong, but greatness is measured in championships, national championships, NBA Finals championships, Super Bowl wins, World Series championships, not playoff appearances. If greatness and success were measured by conference championships and division championships, then absolutely Wisconsin has seen some major success in the last 10 years. And trust me, there were some great moments over the last decade that had me extremely hopeful for our teams. Like when Bronson Koenig hit his last second buzzer beater to send the Badgers on to the Sweet 16 in 2016. To the Sweet 16, Koenig's got it, rises up, the shot, and it's good! It's good! Wisconsin has won it! Or when Nigel Morgan hit his walk-off single against the Diamondbacks, up the middle, to seal the NLDS victory for the Brewers in 2011. Point! Not in time of the Brewers! Advance to the National League Championship Series! Or when the Badgers beat the undefeated Kentucky Wildcats in the Final Four to move on to the National Championship in 2015. And that's it! For the first time since 1941, 74 years, the Wisconsin Badgers will play for the National Championship! Or even when the Badger football team knocked off the number one ranked Ohio State Buckeyes in the regular season in 2010. Intercepted. Let the party begin in Madison. Blake Sorensen has intercepted Terrell Pryor with 113. And come tomorrow, there'll be a new number one. But guess what all of those moments had in common? A crushing defeat very soon after. Like this buzzer beater by the Florida Gators to knock that same Bronson Koenig team out of the NCAA tournament just one year later. Chioza. Oh, and I mean, really, what does a division championship say about a team? that they're better than those four or five teams that year. I mean, that's great, but not a championship. And that's what we've known here in the great state of Wisconsin for the past 10 years since that Packers Super Bowl win. And I am going to prove it to you as we run down sport by sport, season by season, every gut-wrenching moment that we all want to forget. So here we go. Let's start with everyone's favorite team, the Green Bay Packers. A Super Bowl win in 2011, like we talked about earlier, followed by a 15-1 season immediately after that. Our only loss coming to the Kansas City Chiefs in a pretty close game. And that had us all raving about Aaron Rodgers and the true title town of America. Does everybody remember that season? We were undoubtedly the best team in the league. So how on earth does the best team in the league lose to this guy? Eli Manning, Mr. Career 500 record. Not even the best quarterback in his own family. But hey, they went on to win the Super Bowl that year over the Patriots, so I give them props. Good on you, Eli and the Giants. You guys made it happen. But I'll tell you what, this loss has nothing compared to the NFC Championship loss to the Seattle Seahawks in 2015. Brandon Bostic fumbles the onside kick and the Seahawks score very soon after. Brandon Bostic. Oh. With Jordy Nelson right behind him, the best hands on the team. Luckily, the Packers brought that game into overtime where eventually Jermaine Kearse put the final dagger in every cheese lover's heart that night when he caught a touchdown from Russell Wilson to end the game. That one stung really deep for a really long time. I legit can't even watch these videos. It still, it still hurts. Comment below 
how you felt when you saw this in real time five years ago. But while we're on the topic of athletes choking in really big moments, let's jump to the Brewers season this past year. We were taken on the Washington Nationals in a wildcard game to advance to the National League Division Series. With the bases loaded and a two run lead in the bottom of the eighth inning, Juan Soto rips a shot to right field to clear the bases on a fielding error by Trent Grisham out in right field. That is score two as the ball gets away from Grisham and right. That's going to score three runs and the Washington Nationals have the lead. The error allowed the Nationals to take a one run lead that they rode all the way to the ninth inning where they finished up the Brewers season completely and eventually went on to win the World Series. So, hey. Give you props for that. Good job, Nationals. Now that was a nail biter, a really close one that just got away. But don't let it fool you. We've had our share of complete whoopings in major moments throughout this last 10 years. Like when the Badgers lost to Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship in 2014, 59 to nothing. And Ohio State puts six more on the board and they lead 58 nothing or when the Packers lost to the Falcons in the NFC Championship in 2017, when at one point in the third quarter, they were down 31 to zero. Let's just stick with the Packers one more time while we're here. After a couple crazy Hail Marys by Aaron Rodgers to Jeff Janis in the fourth quarter of this game against the Cardinals, we choke as usual as we let Larry Fitzgerald skip on down the field, get within our 10 yard line, and eventually score and end that game and the Packers season completely. And nobody will forget this hit by Anthony Barr a few years later on Aaron Rodgers that completely ended his season with a broken collarbone. We were four and one when this happened. The Packers would go on to lose eight of the next 11 games and miss the playoffs completely. But enough with the Packers, let's get to some baseball. The year is 2018 and the Brewers are fresh off demolishing the Colorado Rockies in the National League Division Series just a few days before. They take the National League West champion Dodgers into a Game 7 at Miller Park, only to lose 5-1, to one, thanks in part to this Yasiel Puig home run that was basically the final nail in the coffin for the Brew Crew that season. 1-1. In the left center field, this ball is in the gap and over the wall for a three-run home run. Yasiel Puig has just made it five to one here in the sixth. The Brewers are still in search of their first World Series title and their first appearance since 1982. There's really not much more to say about the Brewers in this decade. They did lose to the Cardinals in 2011, but that one only went to six games and really didn't have the same drama that any of these other series had. OX on the call. Clean him is. He struck him out, and the Cardinals are National League champions and headed to the World Series. They mob a mot as the Redbirds win this one in uh, six games. Oh. So we're going to move on to our favorite Big Ten team, the Wisconsin Badgers. The Badger basketball team had a great 2013-2014 season, leading to a number two seed in the Big Dance. A win over number one seeded Arizona gave them a chance to play Kentucky in the Final Four, where a three-pointer in the closing seconds of the game by Aaron Harrison led to a heartbreaking loss and an end to the Badgers season. To Aaron Harrison, he throws another one up. Aaron Harrison, Aaron Harrison. He just had another shot to get the Cats up five. One point lead at 74 73 the length of the court, and here comes Trayvon Jackson. Clock down to three seconds. He'll have to put it up. He didn't get it. Kentucky's gone out of the championship game. What a tremendous win. The Wildcats at center court are celebrating again. But the next year looked even more promising. The Badgers cruised to a Big Ten title, a Big Ten tournament title, and a number one seed in the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. A string of wins led them to a Final Four matchup yet again against the Kentucky Wildcats. This time though, Kentucky was undefeated. It was a much anticipated rematch and the Badgers went on to win that game and hand Kentucky their first loss of the season and knock them out of the tournament. Aaron Harrison, long three, no! And the rebound, Karen's out of bounds! It's Wisconsin ball! Not this year. 
Not this year, Aaron. Hayes on the inbounds. Koenig is fouled right away by Aaron Harrison. The Badgers are going to do it, Mike. They're going to pull this off. They're the Badgers looked unstoppable behind Frank Kaminsky, Sam Decker, and Zach Showalter. They went on to face the Duke Blue Devils in the national championship a few days later. A close game all the way to the end. The Blue Devils took home the trophy, led by Jaleel Okafor, Quinn Cook, Justice Winslow, and Grayson Allen. None of which are household names in the NBA these days. Three seconds, he's gonna run out of time, and the Blue Devils are the national champions of 2015. But hey, Frank Kaminsky and Sam Decker really haven't done much in their NBA careers either, so what can I say? Now let's take it back to football again for a brief overview of the Wisconsin Badgers' successful seasons over the last 10 years. Sure, we started off the decade with three consecutive Big Ten championships and three consecutive trips to the Rose Bowl. But guess what? We lost all three in a row to TCU, Oregon, and Stanford. Basically since then, we've been playing second fiddle to Ohio State, who have been racking up conference championships and did snag one national championship along the way. And finally, we get to our most underappreciated, undervalued, everybody's bandwagon team over the last couple years, the Milwaukee Bucks. Personally, I don't think you have a right to cheer for this team quite yet if you did not stick with them through their worst between 2001 and 2018 when they racked up a total of zero playoff series wins and only four seasons with an over 500 record. But as my father-in-law would say, I digress. The Bucks have had some serious regular season success these last couple seasons, but like every other team I have on this list, they have withered away when the moment became too big. When they were up two games to none against the Toronto Raptors in the spring of 2019, the Bucks hit their worst stretch of basketball at the absolute worst time and lost four games in a row to the Kawhi Leonard-led Raptors and thus missing out on their chance to go to their first NBA championship finals since 1974. Raptors with just two games behind the Milwaukee Bucks in the regular season, they're off the bench to celebrate. The Raptors would go on to beat the injury plagued Warriors in the finals and they would eventually lose Kawhi Leonard to the LA Clippers because nobody wants to live in Toronto. Well there it was. Basically every sports gut punch I've had in the last 10 years of my life. We like to stay optimistic though as the Packers are 11-3 so far this year and the Bucks are leading the NBA coming up to this Christmas break. But as we've seen from all the years in the past, we will most likely be packing away our Rodgers jerseys, our Yelich jerseys, and our Giannis Antetokounmpo jerseys early this season, and yet again saying, there's always next year. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Hunter Fisher Golfer. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see more sports and outdoors videos from me on this channel. Until next time, see you later.